Hello there. Welcome back to another episode on Eha Lecture Series. Today we are going to discuss about the third stanza in the poem Passage to India written by the American poet Walt Whitman. So in the second stanza and in the first stanza we discussed about those three achievements that he is celebrating right now. And those three achievements are the opening of Suez Canal, the opening of uh, Trans-Atlantic Cable, the opening of Transcontinental Railway during 1860s. Okay. By pointing these three achievements, he was actually talking to us about a new worship that he wanted to address to the world. He says that uh, all the achievements that uh, already happened in the world of reality, it has to be seen, it has to be taken together with the uh, relevance of, it has to be taken together with the attainment of uh, spirituality that we already had in the past. He connected it with the, um, with the religious texts with the fables, myths and legends of Asia and Africa. So he was actually talking about a new worship. Okay, He was actually um, addressing all the explorers, engineers, architects, scientists, machinists and all saying that what you have done, what you have accomplished with these three achievements you have not done it just for trade and transportation only, but you have done it in the name of God. And as a poet, he feels like it is his duty to address the same, that you have literally started worshipping okay, God in a new way. This is the new religion. And he says that all this is happening just because of a divine plan that is kept by the God from the very beginning getting it and we are just hands okay we are just the hands of uh, God moving on to a uh, discussion of the third stanza in this particular point one of the best thing about this third stanza is the richness of imagery that is being used when the stanza opens he talks about two tableau tableau over here means two pictures so we have two pictures that why I told you that's why I told you this is uh, rich and replete with imagery, this particular stanza. He talks about two tableaus or two pictures over here. One is the opening of Suez Canal. Okay, He uh, actually becomes a distant observer of that inaugural uh, day Okay, when the Suez Canal opened. And on the next moment, okay, he gets into one of the ships which was there in the procession. Are you getting it? And he uh, starts talking, okay, like that, okay, as a person who stands on the deck of a ship. The second picture is that of the opening of uh, this railroad, okay, American railroad. And uh, uh, same as the first case, he first stands as a distant observer of uh, uh, this opening of this railway okay that very day then he gets aboard okay that then he gets into the uh, into the train and he goes on narrating uh, that those geographical regions okay that is covered by the railroad and it is very beautifully done let us move on to this stanza and this is all about the third stanza okay so let's see he has um, you know, a surprise at the end too. Let's see what is the surprise. Okay. Um, keep watching. Moving on to the uh, third stanza of the poem. The stanza goes like this. Passage to India. Lo sore for thee of tableaus twain. Passage to India. Lo sore for thee of tableaus twain. I see in one the Suez Canal initiated, opened. I see the procession of steamships. The Empress Eugenie's leading the van. I mark from on deck the strange landscape. Pure sky. The level sand in distance. I pass swiftly the picturesque groups. The workmen gathered the gigantic dredging machines. So in the 
first stanza inside sorry i shouldn't say stanza the first section inside the third stanza talks about the opening of cs canal this was how it was done okay you have a procession it was said that there were 68 steamships at the opening of cs canal and the then emperor napoleon iii okay the wife of the then emperor napoleon iii she was on board okay of on board of the leading ship and that the title of the leading ship is called vanguard that's why we have the empress eugenie is leading the van van is a short form of vanguard v a n g u a r d that was the first ship in the procession of uh, 68 ships that was there at the opening of a uh, suez canal that is just history Okay, so let's see. Passage to India. Le soul for thee of Taplos twain. So he relates the opening of Suez Canal as one step that we had made. We had in invented in order to get passage to India. In order to get passage to the spiritual kingdom above. Okay, to the very kingdom of God. Are you getting it? Passage to India. Lo sol, lo, over here again that lo comes, okay. This is actually an expression that we uh, we make use of in order to call attention of somebody. So, personification again come into play. Lo sol, for thee of tableaus twain, okay. Also, why is he always accompanying Saul over here? Why can't he uh, only talk about God. Just there is reason for that. Uh, he actually want the company of his soul in order to tra in order to reach heavens. Only soul knows the destination. So that's why he is actually accompanying soul. Are you getting it? His destination is to reach the realm of God. Are you getting it? So he says that lo soul for thee of okay. It's so it's for you. Okay, we are actually accomplishing one by other. And we are reaching up to God. <clears throat> well, I see in one. So among the two pictures that is given over here, portrayed over here. In one picture, I see the opening of Suez Canal. I see in one, the Suez Canal initiated, open, opened over here. It's the case of apostrophe in which one sound is skipped, opened. I see the procession of steamships. The Empress Eugenie is leading the van. I already told you what is the uh, importance of such a usage. She was there. She was the wife of Napoleon III. She was there on the first ship which was there. Assembled there. Okay. For the opening of Zeus Canal. There was a procession of ships. Oh my goodness. How beautiful it was. I actually uh, <coughs> got reminded of um, the opening scene of Titanic. Okay. Uh, we can actually relate that in, in that particular movie. We have seen how crowded it was, that particular port and all. So, almost like that. He says that I mark from on deck. So, uh, in the first, uh, uh, you know, in the first three or four lines, he was a distant observer. Now he is on the deck of the ship. Okay. I mark from on deck. Okay. You know what is deck? It is the top outside floor of a ship. On deck, the strange landscape. Now that standing on the deck of the ship, I can see the landscape, the pure sky, the level sand in distance. Getting it? I pass swiftly the picturesque group. Swift means fast. Okay? So, I have initiated my journey. The ship is moving fast. I am I'm literally moving away from land. We're getting it. The picturesque group over here means it, you know, when you look back onto, I, I would like you to again imagine that opening scene of uh, Titanic, where in the, uh, the, the ship actually starts departing. Okay. Um, so in which you have, you can see many vehicles over there. Crowded men over the everyone will be waving at the uh, lucky men who are on the 
uh, ship and all so like that i pass swiftly the pictures group over here are all the men who are crowded over here when you look back on to them it is picturesque for him because it stays in his memory like an image a beautiful image of that event are you getting it, it so this picturesque group actually comprises of machines and men again groups who are cheering up okay at the opening of the canal and all the workmen gathered okay uh, men who were there who were part and parcel of uh, making of constructing of that canal they are over here the gigantic dredging machines gigantic dredging machine simply jc base okay some work might be there the cleaning process might be going on the canal had opened still work might be going on okay uh, so this is what he remembers okay out of that particular uh, event then moving on to the next section of this third stanza in one again different yet thine all thine or soul the same so now that he is moving on to give us a description about the second picture that he is going to tell us okay again this is an example for imagery we can imagine it out okay see in one again okay this is a different picture i see over my own continent see over here he says that in one again that means in another tableau different okay this this one is different okay i'm not at all talking about the suez canal opening of suez canal that was the first case yet thine but all is dedicated to you my soul okay okay we men we have accomplished all this okay so that we can fulfill the divine purpose of god okay o soul it's all for you all thine o soul the same i see over my own continent the pacific railroad surmounting every barrier okay so he is over here celebrating the union pacific railroad he says that when standing in america in my land okay walt whitman he is an american poet he is talking about american railroad he says that i see over my own continent my own continent here america the pacific railroad surmounting means overcoming all the barriers the sense like uh, you know uh, this railroad actually is a road between europe and asia literally okay it actually bridges 3 or 4000 miles of lands it is actually given like that so of course surmounting all the barriers i see continual trains of cars winding along the plateau plateau is actually the name of a river in nebraska see trains of cars means the compartments of the train so in the beginning he was a distant observer okay i could see the train actually surmounting overcoming all the barriers i could see all these things so okay. over here moving on to the third uh, stand sorry third line uh we come to know that the poet is already aboard okay he is in the train that's why he says i see when i just look out i could see the continual tra continual trains of cars the compartments okay the bogies of the train winding along the plateau it's a river in nebraska so that's why he was saying surmounting every a river is a barrier as far as a human being is concerned okay so it could literally surmount that river freight and passengers freight means goods okay that are already on board and passengers it is taking with it freight and passengers i hear the locomotives rushing and roaring and the thrill sorry and the shrill steam whistle i hear the echoes reverberate through the grandest scenery in the world i crossed the laramie plains i know the rocks in grotesque shapes the buttes buttes means small steep hills i see the plentiful larkspur and wild onions the barren colorless sage deserts so <clears throat> moving on to the second section of the third stanza 
we come across with what all uh, landscapes that he cover okay while in a journey in that uh, train he could see all these landmarks he's describing the places that he is actually traveling okay so why is he giving us he is literally taking the names of each and every sport that he covers okay why is he telling us so this means to address that this train had actually joined okay or bridged miles and miles of uh, places together so he says that i hear now that i am aboard okay i can hear the the kinds how that uh, train starts functioning locomotives rushing and roaring okay and the steam whistle okay it was a steam engine so steam whistles i hear the echoes okay reverberate reverberate means repeat several times those steam okay through the grandest scenery in the world because it is actually covering that much of miles of lands and places so it could cover the echoes of those steam whistle of that train could cover the grandest scenery in the world i cross the laramie plains laramie is the name of a city in america okay so i cross the laramie plains i know the rocks in grotesque shapes okay he goes on describing the land the geography the buttes buttes means as i told you small steep hills I see the plentiful lark spur. Okay, this is a tall garden plant. Okay, you can see it if you go to America. Lark spur. It's a tall garden plant. You might have seen it anyway. And wild onions, barren, colorless sage deserts. Okay, sage is the name of again a small plant. So you have vast areas of sage deserts. and i could witness i could stand witness to all these okay which are uh, literally dispersed in different geographical areas in one journey can you imagine that okay we had literally accomplished that much of unification of the world he celebrating that well i see the plentiful larks were we just finished it then i see in glimpses of her or towering immediately above me the great mountains glimpses of far glimpse means a quick view while on the train while journeying on the train i could see afar some glimpses of mountains okay after covering the sage deserts and all i could see mountains i am moving to an entirely different geographical plane right now towering immediately above me okay towering over here means mountain stand like tower okay in the imagination of the poet towering immediately above me the great mountains i see wind river and the wasatch mountains wasatch actually come in a city of utha i see the monument mountain and the eagles nest eagles nest is a place in colorado he is again talking about another spot i pass the promontory promontory is actually a highland jetting into the sea okay highland jetting into the sea we might have of course see uh, seen it in western movies and all okay highlands jetting onto the sea so i covered all this i ascend the nevadas nevadas is a western state of usa i ascend are you getting it i scan the noble elk mountain mountain elk mountain is situated in canada and wind around its base i could feel the wind around the valley i see the humboldt range this is another place in nevada which is in usa i see the humboldt range i thread the valley and cross the river i see the clear waters of lake the ho the ho is again a lake in usa i see forests of majestic pines or crossing the great desert the alkaline plains i behold enchanting mirages of waters and meadows can you imagine that he's talking about different geographical regions being covered in one single journey he talks about unification 
of the geographical lands that we had accomplished by the construction of this railroad okay remember he is talking about another kind of a worship to god well marking through these and after all in duplicate slender lines okay uh, as a person who is traveling in the train okay in one of the compartments you know he imagines like if i look back i could see all these lands that i have been describing okay or i have been traveling all this time okay it is joined by duplicate slender lines what is this duplicate slender lines over here of course the track of the uh, railway are you getting it so this have been joined connected by us making through these and after all in duplicate slender lines the rail roads bridging the 3 or 4000 miles of land travel oh my goodness with the construction okay with the opening of this trans continental railroad we had accomplished we had bridged we had connected 3 or 4000 miles of land tying the eastern to the western sea the road between europe and uh, asia so this is not at all just a physical passage he is trying to make it spiritual passage intellectual and spiritual passage are you getting it that is why he is trying to uh, you know literally um, talk about or showcase that much of details in one single uh, journey are you getting it well moving on to the last part of the third stanza our genesis thy dream thy dream this is the surprise which was at the end centuries after thou art led in thy grave the shore thou foundest verifies thy dream so who is the genesis over here genesis of course a man from geneva which is in italy and the very man is of course christopher columbus and we know history we have studied in our history columbus was actually trying to find a sea route to india and he felt like he reached india but he had actually discovered america in that attempt i mean correct so that is being referred over here okay our genesis thy dream thy dream okay you had that dream no you had that dream to unify the world you had attempted to find a passage to india he connects it oh my goodness how he connects all these events that happened in the past to the one single determined way that he want to take it up to amende correct he again relates this as a spiritual journey okay which was unknowingly started by columbus are you getting it he says that oh genesis columbus is the genesis over here because he he comes from geneva which is in italy okay or genesis thy dream okay what i have just stopped to mention is of course the fulfillment of your dream thy dream this is a case of repetition again okay literary device repetition thy dream thy dream centuries after the what led in thy grave okay so this actually happened centuries after right now you are in your grave you are lying peacefully in your grave this happened many centuries after your death that is what is meant by that sentence the shore thou foundest verifies thy dream what was that shore that uh, columbus had found america so as a part of america walt whitman says that the very shore you found it okay today verifies your dream it fulfills it stands first in the fulfillment of your dream oh my dear dreamer are you getting it so in first second and third stanzas we have the impression like the earth is spanned space has been minimized the world has been brought together by three achievements time has been minimized by bringing together past and present i mean they correct he went centuries back when he told about 
um, Columbus and he relates it to the present. How simply he does it. We couldn't find passage to India. Uh, he talks about, he comments on the attempt made by Columbus. He couldn't find a passage to India when, he, you know, in that attempt. But, and uh, his trial actually ended in discovering America. But now, America made it possible to find a passage to India. Are you getting it? So, this is how the uh, stanza ends. Uh, if you have any doubt, you can place it in the comment box or you can mail me. I have placed mail id in the description box below uh, thank you for listening we will see in the next session